I was thinking I make it. I was thinking I'm a big player, you know. Then half time, that's the first time I been introduced to the hair dryer by Sir Alex Ferguson. So Patrice, welcome to the Betfair family. We've done a few calls already. You've been putting your predictions, your analysis to betting.betfair.com. You've been really hot on some of them predictions already. Um, we have been talking quite a lot about Manchester United. We're a few games in now. We've seen um, ups and downs already this season. After that disappointing start, though, things are looking better, aren't they? Yeah, well, we always have to be careful, but uh, I'm, I'm always positive. And, um, you know, it's really uh, when I talk about United, I always talk with my heart. But now every team, you know, I will talk about, I have to talk uh, with my heart because I'm working for, for Betfair. But yeah, um, I think the, the two games was a nightmare, the first two games, losing at home and after the Brentford, like 4 0. But what I like about uh, Ten Tag, because you have to give him a lot of credit, I think he, he's been full, like, other manager, previous manager have been in the club where you got those players in the preseason, everyone look sharp, everyone look great. So you feel like when you come, you're like, oh, I can do better than the previous manager with the same player. But it's not the case. And that's why I think after the Brentford game, he makes some massive decision. He dropped out the captain, he put Cristiano Ronaldo in the bench, uh, the left back Malaysia, Malaysia, he gave him like an opportunity. And that was a, a massive statement. And I think things change sometimes with like few players. And it's not like because they were playing that bad, but I think around those players is a lot of negativity. And sometimes you have to get rid of this negativity. And he got the courage to do, to do it. That's why, I'll be honest with you, before the, the Liverpool game, I, w I was like, even when we struggle, even the previous season, we always like perform against Liverpool, and you know because you know it's a big game. It's the it's the it's the biggest like two team in England with the most Premier League uh, trophy. So before the game, like the logic was Liverpool going to beat us, but also Liverpool are also struggling. So I, I wasn't surprised about that win, but I know if we lose that game, Ten Tag and his team will be in massive trouble. And after that, Southampton. You know, that win was really, really important. I think what's changed with United right now is they're happy to suffer. I think because you are United, you have like the, one of the biggest club in the world, the player, they still wanted to look beautiful, play their own football, even Ten Tag, he arrived, he said, okay, I'm gonna do my philosophy, playing from the back, no. Right now, United can't do that. They just have to win game, even in the ugly way. Then we have to trust the process and give Ten Tag consistency and time. But of course, I'm really happy with what's happening right now because no matter, and I promise you, no matter if they were losing game, but actually I see some player, they refuse to lose some challenge, they refuse to concede game uh, goal, so they're playing for the shirt. And that's what I want to see right now. I don't expect United to control the game 90 minutes because from, from like now more than six years we are struggling. So step by step. If you, if you like, you walk out, you bleed for the shirt, this is already a massive step because that's what the fan, United fans are really fair. You know, you can lose a game, but not in the way we were losing those games where they feel the player wasn't giving everything. And that's what I see against Liverpool. We are in a surviving mood. And that's why I'm happy with what I see. You mentioned um, the decisions that Ten Hag took to put Ronaldo and Harry Maguire on the bench. In terms of impact, what, what impact does that have on the players in the dressing room? You know, to see that this, this great Cristiano it, Ronaldo, Ten Hag's come it, in and said, no, you're not starting. The club captain, no, you're not starting. That, sh that must send a bit of a, a shockwave around the rest of them. You, you send a, a massive shockwave. Let, let, let's be clear. Like, I'll be honest with you, like, to, to, to put Cristiano Ronaldo in the bench, this is a massive statement, but even for the people in the dressing room. But also, they also will finally say, OK, you know, we, we have to take our responsibility because Cristiano Ronaldo is not fair because last year he scored like 18 goals. So in his head, he's like, why? Why I'm in the bench? And he's right. And he's right. But you got a manager and you need to respect his decision. So I understand the frustration of Cristiano Ronaldo, but also Ten Tag was like, OK, I'm going to start a new area. Ronaldo's still in my plan because that's what people have to do. Do not straight away think like Ronaldo is not in his plan. I'm sure Ten Tag 
Cristiano Ronaldo is in his plan. He said that but, as well, hasn't but, he? But of yeah. course, and I, I think he's right when he say that. But maybe the way United need to suffer right now, he will need other player, but you always will need Cristiano Ronaldo. Trust me, it will be a moment when you will be like, thanks, Cristiano Ronaldo, stay at my United. And I'm convinced about that. But I think Ten Tag and Cristiano Ronaldo must have an already honest discussion and this is what happened. He dropped him. It's two games. But you remember, Sam, we talk, we are a weekly conversation, and I say, I won't understand if Tag don't put the same team against Southampton because they're winning. And he will do that the same, the same uh, game for the next game. So everything like what's happening right now, for me, is logic. And the captaincy is always a big issue, especially when you play for, for United. And to drop the captain, this is a massive statement. This is more important than Cristiano Ronaldo or whatever. Uh, it must be hard for, for Ari Maguire. And I say people have been unfair with him because even now when he's playing a good game, people will criticize him. Even when he's not playing, you know, if we lose, people are gonna blame Ari Maguire and this is unfair. But right now, you know, you got Varane, you got Martinez, and I'm really proud about Martinez because people judge really quickly about your height but he played like two amazing games. Of course, he will struggle some game against like big striker, against Alan or whatever, Nunes. You know, when we're gonna play against Liverpool again, when he's gonna not, uh, he's gonna be avail uh, available to play. So of course he's gonna struggle, but the way he's fighting, the way he's giving everything, his, his own life, I'm really pleased with what I see. And like I say, I play myself center back in Italy and for Manchester United, height is not a problem. We mentioned at the start of the season, that top four was the target this year under Ten Hag, first season. Is that, is that on track? you think that's still the case, the target top it, four? It, it's still the case. It's still the case for United. Um, this league is crazy this year because remember I told you my, my top four and I didn't include United at the beginning of the season. Uh, but this is, the, this is the goal of every United manager come in because we have to trust the process. And even this year, I'm 100% convinced some player, they didn't come to United simply because they're not playing the Champions League. The Cristiano Ronaldo saga was like, he want to leave because they're not playing the Champions League. That's the only reason. It's not like a financial reason. So that's why if we want to attract player, we need to qualify for the Champions, but also just for United, for the history, for what United represent to, to the fan. We have to be every year in the Europe. And he, he hurt me to talk, that's the target, that's the goal. Because at my time, the goal was to win like at least like three or four trophy per year of winning all the, the trophy, but we're not there. So that's why I say to people to stop living in the past, but to don't forget the past, to be inspired by the past. But we, I'm, myself, you know, I know like the goal, if United like make it for the Champions League, I will be so happy, but that's the reality. And that's why everyone have to be to back to the present and stop living in the past. You had a, an incredible career, won so many trophies, played for a number of uh, brilliant clubs. Talk to me about the Premier League. What's it like, the, the English game? I, I will tell you, it's really funny. You know, the first Premier League game I watched, it was uh, Arsenal. I don't remember against which team, Thierry Henry, uh, invite me at Ibury. And I remember it's funny because it was the first time I see those uh, cops in the horses. I was like, oh, what is that? You know, it was, and the atmosphere was electric. And I promise you, I had like, I said, I need to play in this league. You know, I remember I was watching the Premier League because of Eric Cantona, you know, playing for Man United, but I didn't knew exactly what he was. And from that day, I said, I need to play in the Premier League. And I always say, it's just entertainment. I never compare the league, you know, people will always say, Patrice, but what's the most difficult league, like the French league, the Italian league, or the Premier League, or the Spain? You can't compare them. But what I could say, like, is the Premier League is like two uh, fighter, two boxer. I give you, you give me, and the, the, the first knockout, you win the game. When you play in Italy, it's a chess game. You play, I promise you, just with your brain. And it's all about position. And sometimes if you're not in that position, the team, they study everything. Like I remember Allegri, in, uh, we had a meeting, we, we won 3 nil. I don't remember it was against which team, but we conceded six corner kick. He was fuming, just because we conceded like six 
corner kick. And in France, it's also athletic. It's more like about cardio, endurance. So every league is different, but, but what, a, what a beautiful league. Even this year, it's so exciting. We, we talk every time before the game. We don't know what's going to happen, but we are excited. Oh my God, you know, City is going to play with Crystal Palace. You remember, I say it's going to be an explosive game. Uh, uh, City going to win 3-2. They win 4-2. They were like 2-0 down. I think we had a beautiful start of the Premier League this year. You mentioned there you were inspired by Eric Cantona, Thierry Henry, you, you watched him play. And then you got, got the big move yourself to, to Manchester United. What was that like? Can you remember your first day <laughs> at the club? Oh, I remember. Uh, so I had uh, Liverpool, Inter and Manchester United. And uh, my agent, they say, oh, you know, those clubs are interested. And I say, I will pick United. They say, why? I say, because of Cantona, you know, he's a, he's a role model. Then I didn't know what he was about. You know, I was playing in Monaco in front of uh, 8,000 people. And sometimes I could even hear like the cell phone on, on, <laughs> on, on the stand. So I arrived to Old Trafford and I remember it was a cup game I didn't play because I wasn't registered in that time. And we were playing against uh, like a fifth league division and I asked to Luisa at the time, but people gonna show up because in France, you know, when you play not against a big team, people don't even show up. And it was like 75,000 people. So I was like, okay, this is a new world. And yeah, my first game was a disaster. I remember we play against uh, City. I can see you smiling, Sam. <laughs> He's a massive City fan. All my, I say a big hi to all my nosy neighbor. Anyway, so we play against City. You know, we talked before the, the interview. I'm not a, a, a breakfast fan. Nine in the morning, uh, I see my fellow teammate, uh, Chris, um, Luisa, Mikel Silvestre, eating pasta, eating beans. You know, for me, it was the first time I'm playing at 12, whatever. So I started eating my breakfast. I was feeling like really full, you know. And I went in my room and I puke. I puke all my, my, my food. I was like sweating, feeling sick. And I just had like three training sessions with my teammate. I came in January. Imagine me being in Monte Carlo, nice and sunny, arriving in, in January in, in, in Manchester. It was a massive, you know, uh, change for myself. Anyway. We start the game, 2-0, halftime. Uh, after the first, first five minutes, I play against Trevor St. Clair. He hit me, I was like cutting it. And I remember I was against the post. And you know when you start talking to yourself and I was like, what the hell I'm doing here? The football is so fast, so strong. I was like chilling in Monte Carlo. I've been named the best left back four times in the year, you know, four times in a row. And you know, I was thinking I make it. I was thinking I'm a big player, you know. Then half time, that's the first time I been introduced to the hair dryer by Sir Alex Ferguson. So he destroyed everyone. And he came to me, he just said, you now, you're gonna sit next to me and you're gonna learn the English football. So imagine I play for the French national team. I've been in the final of Champions League. On my first game, I've been served after five, 45 minutes. And it even get worse because after the game, I, I went home and my agent, <laughs> I remember, he looked at me and he put his hand on me. He said, Patrice, I'm sorry. I said, why? He said, I shouldn't have bring you to United. You should have stayed to, Mo to Monaco. This is gonna be really tough for you. So imagine your own agent don't believe in you anymore. So imagine the pain. But I remember this, this was a big wake up call for me. And I always say this is one of my favorite moments because you know when you think you're a big player, it's just my feet just like get straight away down to her and say, okay, now I have to work out. And you know, I missed the preseason for United. The year after that, I went in a preseason in South Africa. I win the, the, the man of the, the tournament. And I remember my, Mick Phelan, he said, he shook my hand, he said, finally, he said, now you're a United player and the rest is history. It's really interesting that because you hear a lot, don't you, about when a club makes a new sign-in and oh, you know, he's going to take time to adapt, he's going he's to need time. You don't really consider the, the sort of player in that, that context. Um, what would you say brought you through? What was the main thing for you that, that got you from being subbed at half-time to Manchester United's legendary left-back? Um, 
I'm always, I love to be challenging in my life. I feel like when you see the best version of myself, I'll be honest with you, people like Paul Scholes, they say, Patrice, I think you were a jockey. And I think we should like send you back for free to Monaco. And I, I remember some player like uh, Rio Ferdinand and Wayne Rooney, they were laughing at me, you know, in training when people were pushing me down because I need to adapt my football. I was a skillful player. I didn't know, you know, first you need to be strong. So going to, to, to go in the gym, I, I, I never like been in the gym when I was, you know, playing in France or whatever. So you understand that, you figure that. But what get me through, I don't know. I always say, is my mom personality. When people ask me, uh, who is your hero? I say, my mom, you know, she lose her leg. And she was like, after that, keep smiling, keep dancing, keep having like, you know, that positive energy. And, you know, when people dub about me, it's not like I need them, you know, to surprise myself, but that's when I'm like, okay, guys. So now it's show time. But this is just part of my personality. So that's why I say to every player when they're struggling, when they change a league, when they come to a different country, to don't panic and to just like understand why they're struggling. And that's why I was like really honest with myself. I say, you're struggling first because you expect that league to be easy. You were thinking you are an amazing player because you reached the final of Champions League and you play for the French national team because you've been named the best. So I was like, just like, okay, Patrice, you are nothing. Start from zero. That's why I say when I signed for United, for me, I feel like I was even doing a new job. It was a, it was a new job. I wasn't like a footballer player before. You spent so many years at Manchester United, won so many trophies. I can imagine you've got many, many highlights you know, Champions League final, lifting the trophy, Premier League titles. Can you pinpoint it down to, to one highlight for us? Sam, it's really tough. It's really tough. Like I say, my highlight was the, 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 the sub against, uh, against the City. Because this changed everything. This made me understand I have to work really, really hard, you know, to, to prove myself, to myself first. Um, I deserve to, to wear that, that uh, United shirt. And after to the, my teammate, to the manager, and of course to the fan. So that moment is the highlight. People expect the chance, of course, because I remember when I signed for United, I say, I didn't sign for this club to, to play the, the, the Champions League because I already reached the final, but to win it. And it was an important moment, but the, the, the city, the city because I love when people, you know, dub about me, even my own manager, and suddenly, boom, the rest is history, like you say. It must have been quite nice lifting the Champions League trophy as well. <laughs> yeah, because I'll be honest with you, I lost four final, and even if it's against team like Barcelona at the time, and it still hurt me, but at least, you know, I, I win it once, and it was a great achievement. I think if you ask too many players if they prefer to win the World Cup or the Champions League, most of them will pick uh, the Champions League. So yeah, it was a really important moment for my career because I have a special relationship with, uh, with this competition. And I remember when I signed for Juventus and I had a meeting with the president Agnelli and Marotta and Paratici, they were the football director at the time. And they say, okay, the goal this year is just get out of the group stage and win the league. And I laugh at them. I say, yeah, come out of the group stage. I say, with the squad we got, I think the, the goal is at least to reach the semi-final. And they laugh at me. They laugh at me. And the first year, we went to the final, and unfortunately, we lose against Barcelona. Looking at the, the Premier League title, obviously Manchester United, record league titles. Um, you won quite a few of them when you were there. Uh, you were part of the team. You lifted the trophy the last time mm. Manchester United were crowned Premier League champions. It's almost 10 years ago, Patrice. Yeah, it's a long time. I don't want to upset uh, the Liverpool fan, but they wait 30 years. So that's why I say history never die. I don't want to wait the same time. Uh, but yeah, and that's why the fan is still living in the past. You know, 10 years is too much for a club like United. You know, you don't have that time. The, the, the fan, they don't have that patience. Especially when you win like 20, you know, league. And I remember when I signed for United, I think Liverpool was 18 and we were only like 15 and they were like, keep laughing at United. Then suddenly, boom, we went to 20, but they are 19. So I don't want Liverpool to equalize that record. That's why I'm begging 
the United player to win the league soon as I can. And now we got City, and City like already win it like four times now, I think. So, you know, we need to, to make sure we change that. But I'm not a fool. We need to trust the process. It will take time. Look at Liverpool where they are. I think it's a good example for, for 30 years. For 30 years, we didn't talk about Liverpool winning the, the league. And look what Klopp is doing. I think that's what we have to see. Like, the management of Liverpool is just amazing. They bring the right manager, the right people around the club, and they're doing great. When you were lifting the, the Premier League title, Nemanja Vidic, Robin Van Persie, Sir Alex Ferguson, um, did you ever feel that it would be this long to, to wait again? No, never, never, because first of all, it was really sad to, to hear Ferguson was uh, leaving because two weeks before the end of the league, I remember Ferguson come to me. He said, Patrice, I see in the press, they say, I'm going to leave, but trust me, I will be here another 10 years. And he told me we need to win the Champions League again and I need two players to come back. One, it was Cristiano Ronaldo and Gareth Bell. And I think in, it, it was like something like 200 million to get those two players back uh, at the club at that time. And United, the board or whatever, they didn't agree with that. And now you can see we, we spend even more money than that. And look where we are. So that's why was, that's was it was really painful, uh, this last trophy. And of course, I didn't expect like to wait for so long after David Moyes came, he didn't work out. So we changing manager, that's what I'm asking now. I need, we need consistency, we need to trust. And I, I don't wanna become like a club where every year or every two years we change the manager because we, do, we, we won't achieve anything doing this. So nobody expect that, I think, no any player. I didn't expect to leave the club also. So his many decision was like massive surprise for us after the, this last uh, trophy. Mm -hmm. You touched on it a little bit with the consistencies. Is that the reason why you think Manchester United haven't quite hit the heights that they're used to, the, the changing constantly? But 100%, 100%. If you're not consistent, what are you going to achieve? Like I say, why people name me twice the best left, left back in the world is about consistency. That's why I, people have to be careful when they say this player is the new Thierry Henry, is the new uh, Wen Rune or is the new Patrice or whatever, because you need to be consistent. You need every year to prove yourself. That's why I say when you play a club like Man United, you know, every year people expect you to win, expect you to be at your best. And it's not being the respect to any other team. But for example, if I, I was playing for, I don't know, uh, Brighton, Every game I'm going to play, people will say, it was amazing, it was unbelievable. But soon as you come to United, all the game you are playing for that team, when people will say you were unbelievable, people will say like, this is, a, this is a normal game. And when you're gonna play like not a good game, they're gonna say, this was a bad game. And when you're gonna play a bad game, they're gonna say, this is one of the worst players I ever see playing for, for United. So you need to deal with that pressure every day game and even every training session. Looking at this season again, looking at the European competition, the Europa League, how serious should Manchester United take this competition? I think Sam, now we have no, we have not the luxury to, to, to pick or to be not serious to one. I think United have to even take serious even every friendly game because that's the way I was. Even the friendly game, I was like, soon as you wear that shirt, you know, you, 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 you carry the history. You carry the history. So that's why <laughs> we don't have the luxury because if we lose in Europa League, people will like destroy us. I remember when we lost the final, uh, it was the guys from uh, Oasis and uh, he make a tweet and he laugh about me. And, but unfortunately for him, <laughs> the week later City play in the final against Chelsea and they, they, they lost. So I laughed uh, about it. That's why that song come for you. You know, I say, maybe you're going to win when I'm 90. <laughs> Don't laugh, Sam. And after all, you're my nosy neighbor. You see, that's the best remix. You know, it's even better than the original song. So, of course, 
We don't have a choice. We have to take every game seriously. Also, given the, the size of the squad, the players that are going to want to play every game, it also gives people a great opportunity as well, doesn't it? The but, but definitely, more game you got, you have a big squad, everyone going to get his chance. And that's why it's great for United, because every single game now are important. You're going to be judged. You're going to be judged if you lose in Opera, Open, uh, Europa League or the FA Cup or the, 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 um, the Carabao Cup, because now they change name every time, or the Premier League is the same. You're wearing the United shirt and you have to represent the club, you know, the fan respecting the badge every single game. Looking at the season, I want to get some quick predictions from you. Who's going to win the Premier League? Sam is a tough one. It's a crazy Premier League. A lot of surprise. Uh, I think you remember, of course, the favourite were Liverpool and City. But everything can happen. Like, you know, more games are coming. And I always say you will know more of it like around December, but now you got the World Cup. So everything is weird. Everything is weird. You can't give like a prediction. But of course, I think City and Liverpool still the favorite. But you got like so many outsiders now. Tottenham, Arsenal, you know. Uh, Chelsea is really weird with Chelsea also. Uh, United can surprise now if they keep like, you know, fighting that way. They can like, they can be, they can be there. But every team like, you see you play against Crystal Palace, you're going to struggle. You play against Newcastle every game. Like are tough. I think we won't see a massive difference points. Like the 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 the, the winner of this league, it won't be like twenty points or ten points like we see like so many previous year. So it's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's it's difficult to say who's going to win the league. But like I say, I I I uh, keep saying what I say at the beginning of the season. Liverpool and City are still the favorite. Champions League winner. This is even more tougher because, like I say, Champions League, you know, you came out of the group stage and everything can happen. You know, it depends on the draw. Before, now, not you have the goal difference, you know, when you play away, but now you don't have that, that advantage anymore. So, again, it's tough. I will surprise. I will say the, the two finalists of this Champions League will be PSG and Bayern Munich. That's my call. Premier League top goal scorer. <laughs> wow. He hurt me to say Alan because I, he's a goal machine. He's a goal machine. He's like, uh, like Guardiola say when he scores his hat trick, it's not like something special because that's what he has done all his career and that's what he's looking for. He wants, you know, to make sure like people understand. It's not because he was scoring goal in the Burdens Liga, he will score the same goal in the Premier League. And uh, Harry Kane will still be here because that's why I say, like, you know, when people, you have uh, a new toys, everyone, like, forget the old toys. But that's the kind of player, like, Harry Kane, you know, he's, I'm sure he won't like to win silverware. And for that, they need, like, their best goal, goal scorer and Harry Kane will be there. But also Nunes, you know. It just came to a new league, but those guys, you know, when Liverpool will win and he doesn't score a goal, I know he won't sleep. They won't sleep because they have this in their DNA. I remember Van Nistelrooy, we won a game like 4-0. And at 4-0, Van Nistelrooy was pick up the ball, running in the centre and putting the ball because he wanted to score a goal. And after that game, just shower, angry, and we just won 4-0 because those guys, they're born for scoring goal. I know they say like, yeah, the most important is the team. No, because they're trying to be humble. The most important for them is they score goal, and that's the truth. I can imagine Mo Salah was feeling quite similar when Liverpool scored nine against Bournemouth and he wasn't on the score sheet. But, but definitely, Sam, when, uh, when you saw those goals and I was like waiting, when Salah gonna score, but of course, it will be like, I'm not proud of myself. Always possible my team score nine goals and I didn't even score one goal. Those players, they are, they, I know, I feel them. They, they are not happy with themselves. You mentioned Haaland. As a defender, 
How do you deal with a player like Erling Haaland? He's a monster. He's using his, uh, you know, his physique. He's a killer in front of the goal. He, he do the right movement. He's sharp for someone tall and, you know, strong like that. I think it will be really, really difficult to, to stop him. You know, I think when he's going to play uh, against like centre defender, when they're not like, you know, bigger than him or stronger than him, they're going to have serious problem. And he's like a cat also. And that's what I, I like about Alan. Like sometimes he disappear, but he's always involved in the game. And you can see against Crystal Palace, it's not like he was involved that three goal. He make them back on track. And that's what is a number nine. This is the real number nine. And I think City, was struggling for so many years, like, not for so many years, sorry, because they were winning the league, but in Champions League, now I feel like they have no excuse. When they lose that final against Chelsea, Guardiola decided to play without any striker. Now this won't happen again. You mentioned the World Cup earlier on. Obviously, it changes the outlook of the Premier League season, but let's look at the World Cup. Who's going to win it? <laughs> again, again. World Cup is uh, it's difficult to predict who is going to win the World Cup. Of course, uh, France is going to be the favourite. They win the last one. But everything can happen. Like, I will give you an example, like the, the French squad. It's the best squad in the world. It's the best squad in the world. But sometimes when you look too good, you see what's happening during the Euro against uh, Switzerland. We are winning 2-0, start dancing, you know. Think we, the game is already finished and we lost. The penalty kick, you know. Everything can happen. Argentina look good. I think Messi is definitely dying to win uh, the World Cup with his country and to, to make sure like people respect him like the same way they respect uh, Maradona. But you got a lot of, you know, like big nations like Germany, Spain, uh, even uh, Holland, Netherlands, we call them now. Uh, it's a lot of teams can create some surprise, like Croatia, so it's difficult to say who is going to win. And especially, it's a weird moment. Like, what about the player playing their league where they have to give everything, but you have to count the injuries and all of that, and they're playing in Qatar. Uh, or oh, it's going to be, like, too hot. I know it's been, like, many things, facility to make sure, like, the player, they didn't feel the heat. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be lots of factor, I think, not even, like, connected to the football, will make massive decisions. Like, the detail will be important. You mentioned a lot of teams there, but there's one team that you didn't mention in the World Cup. I did it on purpose. It's because when you, when, you, when you mention England, they always get the pressure. That's, that's the problem with England. Like, they always have like good qualification game. They get top of their group. Soon as the tournament start, the press are on them, the media on them, and they feel that. And that's, that's why I didn't mention England, because I want England to be the surprise, but of course, England can win the World Cup, but I just don't want to mention England because it was a breaking heart during the Euro for them to lose against Italy. I think to see the fans celebrating in the street, whatever, I wasn't an English, but I'm always support England. And they, they, I was devastated. I was, it really hurt me when England win, but I was also happy because Italy also opened me the door when I was 70 years old, so don't give me wrong. But I didn't mention England on purpose because less we're going to talk about England and more they're going to surprise us and they're going to maybe win the World Cup. OK, we won't say anything about England. Cut, they win that, the World Cup, cut yeah. just what I said because I already put pressure on them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Patrice, Everett, thank you very much and very much looking forward to reading your thoughts, analysis and insight and of course those stellar predictions on betting.betfair.com. Exactly, we always have fun. <laughs>